Hey gang, welcome back for another video here on Geochem. Okay gang, if you've made it this far, this is the end of our biological organic chemistry series. And at least for the way I film these videos, this is the last video on Geochem. So if, you've, if you're here, thank you for rocking with me. I, I appreciate you so much. This last video is kind of like a victory lap. You know, it's not gonna be that crazy. Uh, we're honestly just gonna be talking about hydrogen bonding. So we're gonna unravel and prove the mystery why G pairs with C and A pairs with T or U, okay? So we know that DNA takes on a double helix structure and I'm not gonna draw this well, but <laughs> I'm very bad at doodling. Ugh. Right, the double helix, that's really terrible. But you know, in this double helix format, what that allows is the nitrogenous bases in our nucleotides that we discussed in the nucleotide, uh, the building nucleotides video, is that there's gonna be opportunity for these nucleotides to reach out and kind of interact with one another, okay? And like we said, you know, G doesn't pair with A and C doesn't pair with T. So what's the big deal? Why is there a specified buddy system of G and C and A and T slash U. And that's what we're discussing. And the best part is the explanation is sweet and simple, okay? Chef kiss to the sky, okay? So let's just take a look at G and C. Now, what sucks about this, and at least, you know, I say sucks, but what was unfortunate is that I had to memorize these nitrogenous base structures for my own organic chemistry final. I'm not sure if that's the case with you, Maybe clarify with your professor, but if it's unsure what I would say on the state to be on the safe side, kind of with like the amino acids and the various, you know, the hexoses, pentoses, uh, tetroses of carbohydrates, memorize it. It's annoying, but you don't want to lose points, easy points, right? Because this stuff is much simpler than some of the other things we've done uh, on our Jochem journey, okay? So if we look at G and C, let's draw the structures. So what you're gonna see is that G and C forms three hydrogen bonds with each other, which, right, that is a good, strong intermolecular force. So they're kind of like, you know, they're not bonded to each other, but they're, you know, there's three hydrogen bonds and, you know, it's keeping G and C in place, you know, in place relative and, and you know, it's stabilizing, you know, in the double helix structure. Okay, so, of course, I, I don't have these memorized, so I'm gonna draw these very quickly. Unfortunately, there is a lot of double bonds. <laughs> Nitrogen's in the ring, so it definitely wasn't my favorite thing to memorize, but we got through it. Whoop, okay, that's a bad <laughs> five member ring, but there it is. So that is guanine in its all its glory. So let's draw the cytosine. Nitrogen. Like I said, G and C pair with each other because they are three hydrogen bonds. G and C can't, when they, you know, when G partners up with A, can't make it, it you know, it's, there's never a situation, there's never a pairing where, you know, where G and C is away from each other where they can achieve three hydrogen bonds. It's when they are together, you know, there's magic, sparks fly, okay? So, where are these three hydrogen bonds, right? Let's illustrate that. Well, one is here. Right, remember, a hydrogen bond is from an electron pair from an electronegative atom to a partial positive hydrogen, you know, that must be bonded to, you know, a strongly electronegative atom, right? So there's one hydrogen bond. Then, and again, I could have drawn this maybe tilted a little bit, and you'll see that in like pictures if you Google. A really good thing would might be, you know, also Google, you know, G and C hydrogen bonding, A and T hydrogen bonding. There's hydrogen bonding here between this nitrogen and this hydrogen that's bonded to a very electronegative hydrogen, or sorry, nitrogen rather. And then the last one is with the carbonyl oxygen in C and the H right here in G. So three hydrogen bonds, that's amazing. That's, you know, A and T actually only have A and T or A and U only have two H bonds. 
So G and C kind of flex a little bit on them. They reign supreme, but that is why G and C is a great pair. If you, if you, and I, you know, I'm gonna invite you to try. If you try G and A, or G and T, you will not. You will get two at most. You will not get three hydrogen bonds. Or you take my word for it, and then you can just, you know, make sure you can demonstrate this on a test, right? You know, you, and the same thing would happen if you did C and T or C and A. You would never get, you know, right, you know, you would never get three hydrogen bonds or more. It's always going to be less than three. That is why G and C pair with each other. Okay, so what I'll do is I'll erase this. I'll demonstrate A and T, and I'm not going to do A and U because, uh, honestly, I could, but the a, T and U differ by a methyl group. So showing A and T is essentially the same as A and U. So give me one second, clean this up, we'll look at A and T and we will close the book on OCHEM 2. Okay gang, before we do A and T, in that last hydrogen bonding with G and C, I did forget this double bond in cytosine. So if you're watching it and you're like, you left off a double bond. The worst part is I had it right in front of me and I just missed it. So just remember, don't do, be better than me, okay? Don't leave off double bonds. Okay, so let's do A and T. We will call it not just a video, but we'll call it a series and we'll call it a semester, okay? So A and T. Now the thing is, G and C sports three hydrogen bonds. A and T, as well as A and U, only sports two hydrogen bonds. Now the thing is that it's not a competition, right? It's just that a and T, the best that they, you know, in all the combinations, right, of nitrogenous based pairing, A and T, the best they can do, right, they went out, you know, they, they, they tested the dating pool, and the best thing they could do was find two hydrogen bonds based on how they look, right, and it was, you know, they found each other, two hydrogen bonds, they lived happily ever, ever after, okay? So, if we look at A structure, which looks like this, and I'm not going to forget any, uh, double bonds this time or anything like that. Okay, so we got this. It's a lot. HH. So let me let me box this. Okay, so we got that part. Then we have another five membrane ring over here. Nope, that's a carbon. H again, a rather boxy five membered ring, one, two, three, four, five. Okay, so there's A, there's uh, adenine, and now for thymine, we got, and again, I may not be drawing these in the most convenient conformation. I say convenient, meaning uh, these dotted lines to the hydrogen bond may look longer, but if you if you kind of tilt your structures appropriately, you will, you'll get like a, oh yeah, I definitely see why that hydrogen bond occurs and makes sense. Okay, so like we said, there's only two hydrogen bonds going on here, and those, and I'm forgetting the nature right here. Okay, so the two hydrogen bonds are one of these floating up here is going to interact with the lone pair on that carbonyl oxygen, and I think you can see very easily we have some action going on here between this nitrogen in the ring and this hydrogen right there. So I told you that thymine and uracil look super similar. <laughs> what if I told you this is thymine and then the moment I erase this, you have uracil. So thymine and uracil, super, 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 super similar. You actually just differ by a methyl group. This is thymine. That is uracil, okay? Gang, it has been an absolute pleasure and absolute honor to, you know, if you've watched any of these videos, if you've gotten any benefit from the website, that was the whole intent of making it. So thank you so much for watching and hopefully liking and subscribing. And unfortunately, I won't see you in the next video because this is the end. Good luck on your finals. Good luck on your future endeavors. If it involves chemistry, if it doesn't involve chemistry, just go in with a can-do attitude. I'm sure you're gonna crush it. Uh, you got this.